بسم الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Today, this is a continuation, you can say, of the last halaqa that we, last to last halaqa that we did, which was, which was about, we were covering that hadith in Rabu Salihin where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah walhamdulillah tamla'ul nizan. Um, that saying Subhanallah walhamdulillah fills the scales on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those whose scales are filled. That time we spoke about the depth of the meaning and the attitude of saying Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That's what we talked about last time. So continuing with the same topic, I was going to make this more of a footnote topic because it usually is treated like a footnote topic. Uh, you'll see, uh, you'll see what I'm going to talk about. But it is so beautiful, I wanted to bring this to you. And everybody's familiar and have re read these words um, many times in their lives, inshallah. Which is, what are the words? al baqiyatu salihat How many of you read Surah Al-Kahf? Surah Al-Kahf, right? These words come in Surah Al-Kahf, okay? And they come one more time in the Qur'an in the surah right after it which is surah Maryam. so inshallah let's look at it and then we'll understand what how this relates to the previous topic and why this is important okay a'udhu billahi s-samila alim minash shaitan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim so in surah al-kahab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says waqrib lahum mathalu al-hayat al-dunya kama'in anzalnahu min as-sama O oh, Rasulullah, give them an example of this worldly life. It is like water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down from the sky. And that water then mixes in the vegetation on earth. Right? hashima, And then it becomes, and then it becomes, yellow and it dies it becomes it becomes dust essentially and then the winds they come and then they scatter that dust and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything is ever capable he's always capable of doing anything uh, i'll explain allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying whatever Goodness that you get on this earth from the provision that you might have, you might get happy that, oh, look, the rain is coming, my plants are growing, my vegetation is growing, you know, I'm getting more money, I'm getting more success in this dunya, and I'm becoming wealthier, I'm, I have more farmland, I have more cars, I have more this, I have more this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving this example saying what? Whatever? Whatever it is, it's like that, except that it turns to dust. And then the winds come and they take it all away. And you're left with nothing. Nothing. Not even the dust. Because the winds take that away and scatter it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then follows it with this in the second ayah in Surah Al-Kahf. Al-Malu wal-Banuna Zinatul Hayat al-Dunya. That wealth and children, they are decorations of this dunya they are just mere decorations of this dunya meaning they will remain in this dunya their beginning and end is in this dunya in this worldly life then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal baqiyatu as and the remaining the what remains is Salihat is the good, the good deeds you can say. We'll explain this. The whole topic is this, inshallah. We'll ex we'll get into what this means. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the good that remains, that is enduring, that will remain forever and ever, khairun inda rabbika. It is better in the sight of Allah 
How is it better? It is better ثَوَابًا It is better in reward, reward for you. وَخَيْرٌ amala, And it is a, the, the thing that is better to hope for. You don't hope, you don't tie your hopes and longing and desires to the worldly things that will perish. What will you tie your hopes and rewards to? The things that will last forever beyond this dunya. al salihat What endures is what is good. Roughly clear? This is a rough understanding, okay? Then, another passage in Surah Maryam, right after it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الضَّلَالَةِ فَلْيَمْدُدْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ مَدَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that tell the, tell the ones that, that are misguided, they are in misguidance, that Allah is going to prolong their period, you can say. Meaning, they're gonna, Allah is giving them rope. Have you heard of that term, giving people rope? If they're doing bad, let them do bad, it's okay. They're only digging themselves deeper into the hole. Right? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justice. That those who are insincere, those who have no sincerity and they don't long to be guided and they just want to follow their desires, like and they're animals, right? Like animals follow their desires, they eat and drink and sleep and whatever, they don't look to the akhara. Just like that, human beings are, are worse because not only they're looking for their desires, they have so much more capability, but they don't utilize it. They don't utilize it to do something productive and good. So they're worse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَلْيَمْدُدْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ مَدَّى Then Allah, Ar-Rahman, the All-Merciful, is extending their period of misguidance. Allah is digging their hole deeper. Hatta ida ra'auma yu'adun until they see what is promised for them. Imma al-adab, whether it be punishment, meaning punishment in this dunya, somehow or another. If you're in misguidance, you might think that life is good, but you're only your your hole is getting deeper. Your loved ones are moving away from you. Right? You might have more money, but you have no sakina or patience. Right? You're just following your desires and you're breaking all kinds of, all kinds of ties. You're separating away from the good in your life or what good this dunya has to offer and you're moving away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then they will see the adab in this dunya that is scholars explain. Or they will see what's promised to them in the hereafter. And then they will know, they will eventually know who is in a more evil setting and position and who has the least amount of helpers. Meaning, they will have not have any helpers. Literally means, Ad'afu Junda, the one who is weaker in their troops, in their armies. Meaning, they will not have any supporters. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ خُدَى And Allah will increase the guidance of those who are guided. What is happening to the misguided? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them Rope to be more misguided, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Those who are guided, Allah will give them all more guidance. And who does Allah give guidance to, by the way? The sincere, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the disbelievers, the ingrates, the wrongdoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends no guidance. So, the opposite of them, they're getting guidance, they're guided, right? And when they're guided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We increase their guidance, right? وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ هَتَدَوْ هُدَىٰ وَالْبَاقِيَةَ الصَّالِحَةَ And what remains is what is good. خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا It is better for reward, just like we discussed in the previous passage. 
And is is the best outcome. Those things, the, the, those that things that remain, what are those things? We'll discuss inshallah. Those things that remain have the best outcome. So what are what are the in, what what are the things that remain good? Can you give me some examples, Salman? That things things are things that are good that will remain forever. They won't die off and perish in this dunya. Good deeds. Yes, good deeds. Good deeds. Exactly. So I know you guys this is not an Arabic class and I don't want to make it make it an Arabic class, but Ibn Ashur, for example, he says that what's missing is is the subject. What what are the remaining good things? What are the enduring good things? It's al amal. Wal amal al baqiyat al Right? And then for the Arabs here and those listening, um, Ibn Ashur says it's actually flipped. You never say al amal al baqiyat. What do you say? Al amal al salihat. The good deeds. You don't say the deeds that last forever. You don't say that normally. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dropped the amal, the, the, the deeds, and then flipped the uh, al baqiyat al salihat. It should be al salihat al baqiyat. But he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that to emphasize that what remains is what is al salihat. Okay, so one understanding is al baqiyat al salihat are the good deeds. Okay, this is the general meaning from the ayah as well. Uh, some scholars, uh, there, there's many interpretations of what this actually means. So the other interpretation is it's the five prayers are the al baqiyat al salihat. Okay, that's a, not, not, not a majority opinion. Then good words, kind words, that is al baqiyat al salihat. But the majority of the scholars, uh, when I say majority, there is two schools of thought. So from the apparent meaning in the Quran, it is like, like, uh, like was it was said, it's good deeds. But then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us more about what these are, and we will discuss those in a second. So the majority opinion in it is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala. It is what tahmid saying Alhamdulillah, uh, Tasbih, saying Subhanallah, and a Takbir, which is Allahu Akbar, and Tahmeed, Tahleel. I, I'm totally messed up. Okay, I, I need to read it. La ilaha illallah. Right? La ilaha illallah. And La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Okay. Ibn Abbas says, it is a combination. It is all good deeds and dhikr. Okay? And this is also, Ibn Abbas has a lot of other opinions as well. And this is, this is one that, um, that, that kind of lends itself to the earlier meaning. That it is a combination of everything, that, everything good that you do with sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you do and doing dhikr. Okay? So uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says, Hiya dhikrullah. Qawlu la ilaha illallah, saying there is no God other than Allah, meaning it, and wallahu akbar, and wa subhanallah, how perfect is Allah, and walhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah, wala hawla, wala quwwata illa billah. Okay, let's pause on this one. I didn't, I haven't really explained to you guys last time what la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah means, right? What does it mean? La hawla. There is no possibility. There is no possibility or potential. Anybody studied physics a little bit? Or science, right? Here's this cup. I'm going to take it off the table. What's going to happen? It's going to fall. Does it have, have you heard of the term potential energy? Yeah, yeah everybody's shaking their head, most, most people. But what is the potential energy in this cup right now? It's gonna, it has the potential energy to fall. Keep that in mind. La hawla. There is no potential. There's nothing has potential. La hawla. So the way this... Just like we say, La ilaha, there is no God, right? 
illa Allah, right? So the in Arabic that phrasing is very powerful. What that does is it's a statement of exclusivity. La ilaha. There is no other God at all. That's what it means. Just saying la ilaha. La ilaha with a with a fatha at the end. That is a statement of ex exclusivity. Meaning anything that follows is what's what's uh, uh, the only thing. And everything else, you're excluding it. La ilaha. There is no God. Other God meaning. And when we say la hawla, there is no potential at all. You just totally exclude it. Wala quwwata. And then another exclusion. There is no energy. There is no power. There is no... Nothing can make anything happen. There is no strength in anything. Right? Some things have potential and some things have strength. Like fire. Fire doesn't... Fire burns. It has strength to burn, right? And this, this cup has the strength to drop, right? But it doesn't have strength, I mean, energy, uh, potential to drop, right? It has no energy on its own, by the way, right? It doesn't burn me, it doesn't cool me, it doesn't do anything. Allah is saying there is no potential and there is no capability, automatic, strength in anything. Illa billah, except through Allah. Except by the will of Allah or by the permission of Allah or by the ability Allah puts inside it, right? That's what we, we say, when we say لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله that's what it means. Nothing has the potential nor the power to do anything except by, through Allah. By and through Allah. Everybody clear on لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله? Now, now when you say it, hopefully, now you know what it means. Right, inshallah. Okay. Okay, so back to Ibn Abbas. What is he saying? That Al Baqiyat al Salihat is saying, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, wa subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And also then he adds, Wa tabarakallah. And tabarakallah, Allah is the source of all blessings. Right? Tabarakallah. Wa astaghfirullah. And I seek forgiveness from Allah sallallahu ala rasulillah and saying salat and salam on Rasulullah. Wa siyam, fasting, wa salah, and, and salah, wa hajj, wa sadaqah. And performing the hajj and giving charity. Wa and freeing slaves. Wa jihad and, and a struggle, right? Whether it's internal struggle. Or external struggle, struggling in the path of Allah, well jihad was sila. And joining blood relations, right? Those who are broken apart, the, the relatives, you join them, sila. Okay? Wa jami'u a'mal hasanat and all kinds of good deeds. Wahunna al baqiyatu salihat. And they are al baqiyatu salihat alati tabqa. Okay? Li ahliha fil jannah. Those things will remain for the people of the Al Baqiyatu Salihat, the people of may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among them, the people of Al Baqiyatu Salihat, that it will remain with them in Jannah Ma Damati Samawati Wal Ard until the heavens and the earth remain, meaning forever and ever. Okay? Forever and ever. Alright. But there's five opinions, right? We said it the general meaning is good deeds, five prayers, or kind word, or saying subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah, and another opinion is a combination of all these things. Okay, great. Have, have you heard of the book called Rich Man, Poor Man? Yeah, you have? You've read it? No, you haven't? You have? Okay, mashallah. You know, right before, right before the first passage that we read in Surah Al-Kahf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Al -mal, the uh, wealth and children, they are the decoration for this life in, in Surah Al-Kahf, right? Right before that, do you know what that comes after? That comes after the story of the man with the two gardens. You guys remember the story of the man with the two gardens? Have you ever heard this before? Okay, we're not, we don't have time for that story, but I'll briefly tell you. 
So there was a man. There, there were two men actually, but there was a man. He Allah. He had two gardens. Between there, between the two gardens was a canal or a channel or something. He had this beautiful grape vine, gar, gardens of grape vines. Okay, but we don't have time to read the ayah, so I'm, I'm going to move on. But he was so proud of himself that he has this wealth, right? And he had a a poor companion, some friend some other friend or some companion, this other man, he was not rich. He didn't have two gardens. So he, will, he the, the rich guy with the two gardens, he used to boast about, right? Oh, look, all of this is going to last forever. And if I die uh, uh, in the day of judgment, I will, uh, Allah will give me more. Because his mentality is what? What is, in, is, is, what is in this dunya is going to last forever. And I am getting more in this dunya, wealth and property and fame and name and all of that because Allah loves me. Because Allah loves me and I'm getting all these riches and the, and in the day of judgment, I'm going to be even more successful. That's his, that's his attitude, right? So, he says, مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَا إِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَى رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا I will have more better outcomes on when I return to my God. So the poor man, the poor man, he's hearing him. Okay? And he's having a conversation with him. And he's saying, أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَاءٍ Are you being ungrateful? Kufr means ungratefulness, by the way. Its true meaning of kufr is ungratefulness. So, akafarta billadi khalaqa Are you being ungrateful to the one who created you from dust? Thumma min nutfa, and from the liquid? Thumma sawaka rajula, and then he made you a, a stand, stand up upright man? Lakinnahu Allahu rabbi, wa la ushriku bi rabbi ahada. He is my law. Now, Instead of blaming him, he's now talking out about himself. You know, this is a good, by the way, just a psychological topic. If you want to give somebody an advice, you don't blame them. You, 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 you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. What you say, you, you convert it to yourself. You say, if it were me, I would do this good. And I, you'd completely flip it. And then you, you talk about the positives of what a positive action looks like and that automatically gives advice to the other person rather than blaming them. So this is what the Qur'an is teaching us. What is this person doing now, the poor man? He's saying, لَكِنَّ هُوَ اللَّهُ رَبِّي For us, for me, He is my Lord. وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا And I don't do shirk in my Lord. Meaning shirk what? How was he doing shirk? Him being arrogant that he has all of this control and he didn't attribute it to Allah at all, right? He attributed it to himself. Like this was my accomplishment. I put in the hard work. I put in the seeds of the grapes or whatever I need to do to grow this garden and I'm watering it. And I am, I am, I am doing this. All of this is growing because of all of my hard work. So that is... You don't attribute it to, you're not grateful to Allah. So he, he's saying, Akatarta, are you being ungrateful? And he said, I don't shirk, do shirk in Allah. Walawla idhakalta jannataka. And then if he gives him advice that if you were to enter your jannah, he didn't say, don't say it. He's saying, if you were to enter your jannah and you said, Masha Allah, la quwwata illa bi. Like he attributes that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know how Muslims we say mashaAllah? This is where it comes from by the way. It comes from this ayah that was revealed 1400 plus years ago. Okay? MashaAllah, what does it mean? If Allah wills. What are we doing? When we say see something nice, what do we say? MashaAllah. Right? MashaAllah, which means Whatever Allah wills, it could be good or bad, it's the will of Allah, right? So he says, if you were to say, Masha Allah, la quwwata illa billah, that this is luscious through the strength, 
through Allah. I didn't have this capability. It was the will of Allah. Ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. In tarani ana aqalla min kamalin wa walada. And you know that I am poor. I don't have as much money or as many children as you. Fa'asa rabbi an yu'ti na khayran min jannatik. That it may be that Allah, through my attitude, essentially he's saying, and the dhikr that I'm doing, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah, you will see that Allah may give, you, give me a jannah better than you. وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتُسْبِحَ سُعِيدًا زَلَقًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send a storm over the garden. He didn't say your garden, he just says the garden. And then it will get destroyed. That it may be, if it was up to Allah, then He could give me a Jannah better than this. And then you, that garden that you're looking at may get destroyed. So, this comes right before the passage of Al Baqiyat al Salihat. Now you know what it means. What does it mean? It is attitude, sincerity, and it's a dhikr too, saying, MashaAllah. Okay. So, what happened to him? What happened to him? Moral of the story: a storm came, destroyed everything, and then he was in uh, deep regret. Okay. All right. So it's attitude through zikr. Zikr, you know, oft oftentimes we have the right attitude, but we don't know what to do with that attitude. But our attitude is oftentimes misguided because. The zikr that we do is just lip service. We just memorize the few abracadabra uh, words in Arabic that mean nothing to us. And then we just say them and we just expect that that's going to give us, that's going to fix our problems. It's abracadabra, right? Open sesame. Right? And the sesame door is going to open. You guys know? Uh, yeah, open sesame. Exactly. Yeah, sure. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a treatment for our attitude, which is doing the dhikr, but with meaning. Because if you don't understand what dhikr you're doing, how is it going to affect you and transform you if you don't internalize what you're saying? Number one, there's a big book of dhikr over there called Remembrances of Allah by Imam Nawawi. Yeah, definitely read it. It's called Kitab al -Athkar. It will teach you all the dhikr. And that dhikr will then transform you inside. By the way, Quran is also dhikr, right? Read those afkar, the short ones, Quran, and all of that is going to fix that attitude and those words then automatically come out of your mouth with the right attitude. Okay? So this is um, what, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Hadith Ahmad, Istakthiru min al-baqiyat al-salihat. Increase in Al-Baqiyat Al-Salihat. I'm not going to translate it anymore. I hope you guys understand. Okay? He said, increase Al-Baqiyat Al-Salihat to the Sahaba. It was asked, like, Oh Rasulullah, what are they? Ma hiya ya Rasulullah? Qala Al-Milla. They are, they are Al-Milla. What is Milla mean in Arabic? Hmm. Group of people that? That follow the same thing. Yes. Yes, a group of people that do the same thing. So, birds of a feather flock together, yes. that kind of thing. Yeah. That's the meaning of milla. Another uh, translation of milla is a religious practice that a group of people do together, right? That's called milla. So, uh, so Rasulullah uh, so, uh, says, increase al baqiyat al saliha. Then it was asked, what are they, O Rasulullah? And then he says, they are the milla. They are the religious practices, or the practices that you need to do. And then it was asked, What are they, O Rasulullah? What is that millah? Qala at takbir, Allahu Akbar, wa tahleel, la ilaha illallah, wa tasbih, subhanallah, wa tahmeed, alhamdulillah, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata illa billah. So, what in this hadith, what do we learn? Rasulullah explained what al-baqiyat al-salihata What are they? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa billah Al-Aliyul Azim, you could say that, no problem 
Well, the, the Desi people might remember this from this is a uh, what Tisra. is it? The, this is the Tisra Kalima, the, the third Kalima, right? This is why they teach it to you. So you just, I, I wish they taught the meaning, which would be more powerful, but they teach you this. What is it again? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Ali 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 Great. Now you know the Milla, the religious practice. What is it? It's dhikr. It's dhikr. It's not a tisra kalma. It's a dhikr, okay? That you need to do often. Okay? And then Rasulullah again explains what is al baqiyat al salihah. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khudu Junnatakum. Junnatakum. Take, take, lift, pick up your shields, he says. Pick up your shields. Shields, you know, that you protect yourself from. Then they, we said, Oh Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the enemies, you mean? Right? Qala la, no, 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 no. Junnatakum min al nar. Your shield from the hellfire. And he says, Kulu, say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar. Fa innaha ya'atina yawm al-qiyamati munjiyat. Because these statements are going to come as a savior for you on the day of judgment. Wa muqaddamatin. And they will be the ones that will be presented. Wa hunna. And they are al-baqiyat al-salihat. So he then explains, this is missing. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Where you guys get the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna now move on quickly. We're running out of time. He, Rasulullah gave many, many, many um, virtues of Al Baqiyat al Salihat. He says that Allah has chosen four kalimas. Okay, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wa Allahu Akbar. Muslim. Okay, he says, Habbu al Kalamu Illallah Arba. The four statements that Allah loves are four. What you all know. Oh, okay. And then, لا يضرك بأيهن بدأت. You can start with any one of them. You don't have to start with Subhanallah. You don't have to start with Alhamdulillah. You can start with in any order, it, right? You can do it. And then he says, أفضل الكلام بعد القرآن. The best statements after the Quran, وهو من القرآن. And they are from the Quran. These statements, right? أربعة. There are four. What are they? And you can start with any one of them, and you all know now, right? And then. He says, if you were to say these four statements, Habbu ilayya, if I were to say these statements, these are more beloved to me, Mimma Talat alayhi shams. They are more beloved to me than anything upon which the sun rises. Every which means everything. They're more beloved to me than everything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. Okay, now this is so beautiful. SubhanAllah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Hadith Tirmidhi. إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرْجَعُوا Rasulullah said, when you, when you visit or pass through the Riyadh al-Jannah, the gardens of the Jannah, then you should do, then you should do Rata. I will explain. Okay? Then you should do Rata. So, the Sahaba, curious as they were, always wanting to learn from Rasulullah, he, they were like, what, is the, what are the gardens of the Jannah? Riyadh al-Jannah. And he said, Al Masajid. They are the Masajid. They are the gardens of the Jannah. And then, then they asked, What is Rat'a, O Rasulullah? He's like, when you, when you pass by the gardens of the Jannah, meaning Masajid, then you should do Rat'a. He's like, What is doing Rat'a? He said, Say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha illallah, wa Allah. Meaning, do dhikr in the Masajid. Okay? Then there's more uh, virtuous virtues. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi fi yawmin mi'ata marra. That's saying Subhanallah wa bihamdi, 100 times a day, saying that, Huttat khataya. They, they uh, remove the sins. Wa in kanat misla zabad al And if they were even the foam of the sea. So your sins can be so much as the foam in the sea. And they will just disappear. So, and then he also said um, that these statements, tanfudul khataya kama tanfudus shajaratu waraqaha, that they uh, shed the uh, shed the sins just like a, a tree sheds its leaves. Just saying these four words. 
And then uh, he, Rasulullah sallam in another hadith, this is a longer one, so I'm just going to give you a, 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 a summary that he took he took a branch, a dry branch with a dry leaf on it, and then he removed the leaf, right? And he's like, you see, you see what I did, right? He's like. If you were to say La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, walhamdulillah, wa subhanallah, just like this leaf drop, that's how all of your sins will drop. Okay? Then he's t he's speaking to Abu Darda radiallahu an. Khudhunna ya Abu Darda, take a night. Meaning, implement these in your life, O oh Abu Darda, qabla an yuhala baynaka wa baynahum, until you are separated from them. Meaning. You die, you die, you're no longer able to do the right? فَإِنَّهُنَّ الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ Because these are the things that will last forever. Meaning, last forever for you as reward and, and, and salvation. وَهُنَّ مِنْ كُنُوزِ الْجَنَّةِ And these are from the treasures of Jannah. And then look what Abu Darda is saying. قَالَ أَبُوْ سَلَمَا فَكَانَ أَبُوْ دَرْدَا إذا ذكر هذا الحديث أبو دردا يسمى مention this hadith right he says I لا أهلل that I always do تهليل meaning لا إله إلا الله وأكبر and I always do تكبير saying الله أكبر ولا أسبح and I always do تسبيح saying سبحان الله حتى إذا رآني جاهل the when an ignorant جاهل person looks at me thinks I'm crazy that's how much I do the dhikr. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha. Abu Darda is saying, I do so much that people call me crazy. Hasaba anni majnoon. They think I am crazy. I'm going to skip uh, a little bit. I'm going to talk about the story of Juwayriya, our mother, radiallahu anha, the, the, the wife of Rasulullah, our mother, Juwayriya. So, uh, so after the, the Fajr prayer, I'm just going to make it short. Uh, after the Fajr prayer, she kept doing dhikr. And Rasulullah saw her doing dhikr in her musalla, in her musalla, she wasn't in the masjid. She was in, the, in, her, in her hujra, in her apartment, doing dhikr. And then Rasulullah left. And then he came back um, after. And then he saw her doing dhikr again, later on in the morning. So this is Ju our mother Juwairiya, radiallahu anha. So he asked her, "Ma zilti ala al-hal illati faraktuki alayha?" That you are still in the same place and in the same condition, like I left you. Like you're still doing the same thing, same zikr. She said, "Naam, yes." O Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Qala Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, laqad kultu baad baadaki arba'a kalimatin thalath marrat." If you were to say these statements three times, la wuzinat bima kultu mundul yomi. That was a net hun. If you were to weigh what these these statements are, we're gonna talk about what those statements are. If you were to weigh those statements compared to what you what you're saying, they would have outweighed it. Okay, just saying these statements outweighs all of the others. What are those statements? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adad khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zidat arshihi wa midad kalimati. Again, this is about attitude. Like we learned the advice that the poor man was giving to the rich man. Connect it to Allah. Whatever you do, connect it to Allah. Glorify Allah. Don't do shirk with Allah. So what do these statements mean? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. How per, a, a perfection belongs to Allah and through through His praise. Meaning everything is through His praise. All we can do is praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we cannot count His praises. Adada khalqihi. Praise as much as His all His creation. Do we know? Can we count all the creation of Allah? No. We don't even know our universe. We don't even know the end of this universe. We don't know how infinitely huge it is. We can travel 95 billion years across, 95 billion years at the speed of light. We can travel. At the speed of light, I'm going to say it again. At the speed of light, we can travel for 95 billion years and you will not reach the end of the universe. Yes. Subhanallah. Warida nafsi. And what pleases him. 
جل وعلا وزينة عرشي and the weight of his throne ومداد كلماته and the ink that you describe Allah's greatness with meaning it's never ending ومداد كلماته okay all right now before we end couple of couple of things inshallah you know Isra and Mi'raj story so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through the seven skies, first sky, second sky, third. On the last sky, the seventh sky, who did he meet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. Aha. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is now telling us, Ra'aytu Ibrahim Laylata Usriyabi. I saw Ibrahim on the night of Isra. Faqala. Then Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam after greeting him and all of this, right? And then he later had a conversation. And then Ibrahim is telling Rasulullah said something. He said, Ya Muhammad, أَقْرِئْ أُمَّتَكَ مِنِّي salam. Give your ummah salam from me. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Abina Ibrahim. Wa alaikum as salam. وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ And tell them أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ طَيِّبَةُ التُرْبَى that Jannah, Jannah is lush, fertile ground. Not lush. It Jannah is fertile ground. What is fertile ground? In which you know, if you put a seed, it's gonna grow, right? Right. So Jannah is fertile ground. Azbatul ma, and it is, and it has water, rivers that are flowing with pure delicious water okay but the but the ground is wa anna but the ground there's nothing growing in it it's just fertile soil in jannah so ibrahim alayhi salam is saying tell your people that jannah is like this it's, it has fertile ground and has rivers flowing but there's wa ghirasuha and he said its seeds are its grasses meaning what will grow in it is what Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Those are the seeds of the greenery, the lush greenery that will grow in Jannah. So if you want more greenery around you in Jannah, what do you need to do? Do the zikr, right? Then uh, another story. Isn't that beautiful, by the way? I don't know if you've heard that before. Then, a Bedouin came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Allimni khayra, teach me something good, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, something good I can do. So he told him, say, Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar. And then he did the ba'a with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he left. And then he came back another, another time and uh, so he kept on saying the dhikr, okay? And then he came back. So he came back looking all flustered, right? Really uh, upset, right? So Rasulullah smiled and he says, You fakir al bais. Like, you know, he's like so like anxious right now. Like he really needs something. He's really thinking about something. Something's bothering him. So he smiled. And then he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh, Rasulullah, uh, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, hadha kulluhu lillah, all of this is for Allah, famaliyah, what is it for me though? I want something too. You know, this is all for Allah, what do I get? So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, I'm not sure how authentic this hadith is, but inshallah, um, فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ إِذَا قُلْتَ سُبْحَانَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ قَالَ اللَّهُ صَدَقْتَ That if you say Subhanallah, how perfect is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you've told the truth. That yes, perfection belongs to me essentially, right? وَإِذَا قُلْتَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ And if you say الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ قَالَ اللَّهُ صَدَقْتَ and if you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds with, yes, you said the truth. وَإِذَا قُلْتَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ قَالَ صَدَقْتَ قَالَ اللَّهُ صَدَقْتَ That you've told the truth. وَإِذَا قُلْتَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ قَالَ اللَّهُ صَدَقْتَ And Allah says, yes, you've told the truth. 
Then he says, فَتَقُولُ Then what, you should, what, will, what should you do now? You should say, Allahu مَغْفِرْلِي Oh Allah, forgive me. فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ قَدْ فَعَلْتُ I have done it. Meaning if you do the dhikr with the right attitude, now if you make a dua, Allah says, I have done it. You're forgiven. Allahumarhamni. And if you say, Oh Allah, have mercy upon me, Allah says, I have done it. I have mercy on you. Allah Allahumarzukni. That oh Allah uh, give me rizq. And I have done it. I have given you the risk. And then the, 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 the Sahabi and the Bedouin became so happy that he did again bay'ah with Rasulullah And he did seven bay'ahs with Rasulullah. That's how happy he became. That he gave, now I have something too. Right? And uh, this is why Rasulullah said what? That do you know, I'm just going to roughly translate because we're running out of time. That should I, shouldn't I teach you something that you should do? That you will be able to reach the pious people before you? You will be able to reach their level? SubhanAllah. How do we reach the, the pious people, the level of pious people before us? And he says, those who will come after you, you will be able to, even if they're pious, you will be far ahead of them. Meaning you, you'll end up winning from the previous and the people after you, right? And no one can beat you, he said, unless they do more of what I'm about to tell you. What did he say? Yeah, bal bala ya Rasulullah. He says, to subbihun, say subhanallah, wa tukabbirun, say Allahu Akbar, wa tahmadun, say alhamdulillah, duburu kulli salah, at the end of every salah, thalathan wa thalathina marra, 33 times. Don't we do this? Now you know why. al Did it make sense? This whole topic, usually this is a footnote discussion point. But it is so beautiful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow gave me... Uh, I didn't want to do a halaqa tonight. I was so tired and busy this whole week, I had zero preparation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me this morning, do the halaqa. And uh, somehow I and found this content that I wanted to, I thought, I, I had a footnote comment on al baqiyat al-Salihat today. I had a footnote comment, literally, from the previous session that I did, and the meaning of Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allah. And, I don't know, SubhanAllah, it's so, it's so beautiful, it's so powerful. Now, I, did I make all of you zakirin? Right? We can do so much more. So I wanted to give, quickly talk about so, you know about Sufism? Just last thing I will say, inshallah. You know about Sufism, right? What is it really? Let me just tell you something just to remove misconception. Yes, there's crazy people. Crazy people are everywhere. So, you'll find crazy people in all kinds of groups, right? Okay. The, the, the Sufism is all about, in addition to just the ritual practice, you also do the spiritual practice. Right? You do tazkiyah, and you do dhikr, and you read a lot of Qur'an, and you contemplate, and you remove the love of the dunya from yourself, okay? That's all it's about. Everybody understand? That's what Sufi, it's not a bad word. It's just as a, unfortunately because of some bad apples, it has gotten a bad name. Okay. Do you know, just like people are proud to say, I am Hanafi, and I am Shafi'i, and I am Maliki, I am Hanbali, just like that. And I am Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And some people say, I am proud to be Shia. Or some people say, I am proud to be Ash'ari, right? I am an Ash'ari, right? I am not these, these other people. And some people say, I am a Salafi, whatever. Okay. Just like that, just literally 200 years ago, there used to be another title. So you must have heard of people, something, 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 al hambali something, 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 al shafii That's in their name, the last name. Okay? That they made their last name that name. They associated themselves with the fiqh school. Similarly, everyone in the Muslim ummah, almost everyone, 
200 years ago, this is going to, you're going to be shocked. They had the name of the Sufi tariqah that they belong to as also their part of their last name, Al-Qadiri. Who knows the Pakistani people, the Desi people, Qadiris, you know the Qadiris last name? Where does that come from? Sufi tariqah. This was all over the world, not just the, in the Desi world. Qadiriya. Huh? Also, Shadiliya. Huh? Sanusiya. And Tijaniya. And so many more, right? So, what, what, why am I talking about Sufism? We just talked about Dhikr. Do you know the purpose of, of that? They have a practice of doing Dhikr. And every tariqa, tariqa means the method of doing zikr and method of doing ibadah. It has nothing to do with abandoning everything else. No, they follow the sharia, they are the shafi'is, they are hanbali, they are maliki, they are uh, hanafi. All of these people, they do all those things. On top of that, they have a specific methodology to do zikr. Okay? So, qadiriyas have their own way, shadiliya has their own way. If it were up to me, wallahi, 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 may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me from among them. Morning and evening of car that we all know that we put on, they, these, it is from here, okay? From these tariqas that, that we have developed. Those morning and evening of car they do, they have their own methodologies, and, and all of those of them are beautiful. If those who are interested, I can share the Shadiliya one. I'm a little bit familiar with this one. Uh, and it's beautiful and if it if i had 45 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes in the evening if i could find myself to dedicate time i would do it every single morning every single evening and this these are all of the athkar and all of the al-baqiyat al-salihat